Hello all, welcome to new session on physics. Today's new chapter is wave optics. Let us start the new chapter. Chapter is the wave optics. Already we know that light is a form of energy. Light can travel from one point to another point, or light can travel from one medium to another medium. In wave optics, we are going to study wave nature of the light. I mean, it is nothing but the branch of physical optics which deals about the wave nature of the light that we are calling wave optics. Simply, the branch of physics which study about the wave nature of the light that we are calling wave optics. In wave optics, mainly we are studying refraction, mainly we are studying interference, diffraction, and interference of the light. Before that, so many theories proposed regarding the nature of the light. Actually, light is act as a wave and light is act as a ray. Light has both nature. I mean, light has a dual nature. When light propagate in the medium, light is act as a wave. And whenever light interact with the matter, the light is act as a particle. So that the light exists a dual nature. Concern to theories of the light, concern to nature of the light, concern to properties of the light. So many theories are proposed by different scientists. Let us take. The first theory proposed concern to nature of the light is nothing but Newton corpuscular theory. What Newton says that we will see. The first theory concern proposed concern to nature of the light and property of the light that theory is nothing but Newton corpuscular theory. First theory Newton's corpuscular theory. Newton's corpuscular theory. See here. First theory concerned to nature of the light. Newton says that light consists of small particles, light consists of discrete particles, those are called as corpuscles. I mean, when light propagates in the medium, the light consists of very, very small particles of different size, those particles he called as corpuscles. I mean, the light exists different color. The different color of the light is due to the different size of the corpuscles. What do you say? Light made up of very, very smaller particles, those particles he called as corpuscle. He called as corpuscles. I mean, the different color of the light is exists due to different size of the corpuscles. Newton says that when light propagates from different medium, I mean light travels from rear medium to denser medium and denser medium to rear medium. Here Newton proposed that the speed of the light is more in the denser medium and speed of the light is less in the rear medium. He says that the speed of the light in denser medium is more as compared to the speed of light in rear medium. But later on, the Foucault proposed that. The speed of the light in the denser medium is less and speed of light in rear medium is more. So that this theory has been rejected. So here what he says? He says that speed of light is more in denser medium. Speed of light is more in denser medium. Speed of light is more is more in denser medium. Denser medium than in rarer medium. Then later the Foucault proposed that the speed of light in denser medium is not more as compared to rarer medium. So that this theory has been rejected. After Newton corpuscular theory, one more theory has proposed that we are calling Huygens view theory. See here. Next theory concerned to nature of the light is nothing but Huygens theory. Huygens wave theory. Huygens wave theory of light. This is second theory proposed by nature of the light. Huygens says that light is periodic disturbance that travels in the medium in the form of waves. When light propagates in the medium, it is a type of disturbance. Due to type of disturbance, it travels in the medium in the form of waves. And he proposed that when light travels in the medium, light is a longitudinal wave. Longitudinal means the medium particles vibrate parallel to direction of propagation of the waves. And 
using huygens theory he explain interference he explain diffraction and polarization of the light and using huygens theory he explain reflection and refraction of light also what he says when light travels in the medium it travels in the form of disturbance though disturbance is called as waves i mean it is travels in the form of waves and mainly what we propose light is not a transverse wave instead light is a longitudinal wave he proposed that light is a longitudinal wave light is longitudinal wave light is a longitudinal wave longitudinal means the medium particles vibrate parallel to direction of propagation of the wave simply propose that when light travels it create the disturbance due to disturbance it travels in the medium like a sound we know that sound is a longitudinal wave but later later fresnel proposed that light is not a longitudinal wave instead the light is a transverse in nature see here later on what fresnel proposed fresnel proposed that he proposed that light is a transverse in nature light is transverse in nature transverse in nature mean the medium particles vibrate perpendicular to direction of propagation of the wave that way we are calling transverse wave see here using huygens theory what we can explain using huygens theory you can explain reflection of light refraction of light you can explain interference of the light you can explain diffraction of the light like so many phenomena explained other than only one limitation huygens theory exists what it is he proposed that light is not a transverse instead light is a longitudinal this is one of the debate of huygens theory then after incomplete explanation of the huygens theory one more wave theory proposed that we are calling maxwell's electromagnetic wave theory after huygens one more scientist explain the nature of the light that theory maxwell's electromagnetic theory maxwell's electromagnetic theory maxwell's electromagnetic theory see here what maxwell says concern to theory of the light concern to nature of the light simply maxwell says that light is a electromagnetic wave it consists of time varying electric and magnetic field which are perpendicular to each other and perpendicular to direction of propagation of the wave this concept only you have seen electromagnetic waves there what we have seen light is a electromagnetic wave it consists of time varying electric and magnetic field and it also perpendicular to direction of propagation of the wave so here when light travels in the medium it exists transverse in nature and electromagnetic waves are different types those we are classified into seven types already you have seen in case of electromagnetic waves they will explain the concept of displacement current and what are uses of different types of electromagnetic wave that already you have seen simply according to electromagnetic what it is electromagnetic wave is a transverse in nature it is a transverse in nature and it is travels in the space in absence of medium or in presence of medium also with speed of light 3 into 10 to with speed of the light with 3 of 3 into 10 to 8 meter per second but maxwell electromagnetic theory can explain reflection refraction and all phenomena but it doesn't explain photoelectric effect and compton effect photoelectric effect and compton effect see here maxwell electromagnetic theory failed to explain he fails to explain failed to explain photoelectric effect photo electric effect photo electric effect ein ein compton effect photo electric effect ein compton effect so this is main failure of maxwell's electromagnetic theory after maxwell one more scientist produced regarding the nature of the light that we are calling Einstein's quantum theory of light Einstein's Einstein's quantum theory of light quantum theory 
Einstein's quantum theory. Einstein's quantum theory. See here. Einstein quantum theory simply Einstein said that when light travels in the medium, it consists of discrete packets. Discrete packets, though discrete packet is called as photon. According to Einstein, what he says, when light propagates in the medium, the light consists of discrete packets, though the discrete packets are called as photon, and photon has the energy. When light travels, it consists of a discrete packet of energy, though discrete packets of energy is called as photon, and photon energy can be given E is equal to H into nu. Where nu we are calling frequency of the radiation and H the Planck's constant. Using Einstein quantum theory, he explained well about the photoelectric effect and quantum effect. Using Einstein theory, what he has explained? He explained the photoelectric effect and quantum effect. Later chapter, next chapter we will see. We have the separate chapter, the dual nature of matter and radiation, that we will see. Simply, what Einstein says, he explained using the particle nature of the light. He said the light is a particle in nature, it consists of discrete packet of energy, those are called as photon, and it has energy e is equal to h into nu. But Einstein quantum theory does not explain interference, diffraction, polarization, along with refraction and reflection of the light. It does not explain. So that again the Einstein quantum theory has lot of limitation other than he only explained the photoelectric effect and counter effect. Then last theory concerned to nature of the light that we are calling de Broglie dual nature of light. De Broglie, de Broglie, de Broglie dual nature of light. Dual nature of light. De Broglie, dual nature of light. This is last theory concerned to nature of the light. De Broglie says that the universe made up of very small particles and radiations. We know that when like a Particles are moving, like electron moving, proton moving, neutrons are moving. Whenever these small particles are moving, those particles associated with wave and those wave he called as de Broglie waves. Those wave he called as de Broglie wave and the de Broglie wave has the wavelength. That wavelength can be given. Wavelength of the de Broglie wave lambda is equal to h divided by p. What he says? Every particles when they moving, they associated with the wave. What are those particles? Either it is protons, neutrons, or we are calling uh, electrons, or can alpha particles, beta particles, or gamma particles. So whatever small particles moving, or every particles moving, each particle associated with the wave, those wave he called as the de Broglie wave. I mean, he explained well about particle nature of the light. But de Broglie says that light exists a dual nature. Dual nature means it act as a wave, it act as a particle. How we explain the dual nature of the light? That we will see now. Very simple, when light propagates in the medium, light is act as a wave. Light is act as a wave. And when light interact with the matter, the light is act as a particle. So that light exists a dual nature, dual means it act as a sometime wave, it is act as a sometime particle. So that the different theories of the light explain the different particles, different nature of the light. But a single theory does not explain all properties of the light. Newton corpuscular theory explains reflection, refraction of the light. Right? Huygens theory explains reflection, refraction, diffraction, interference, and the polarization of the light. But he failed to explain what it is. Light is a light is a transverse in nature. Due to that factor, this Huygens theory has rejected. Again, Maxwell comes that, he says that light is the electromagnetic wave and travels in the form of uh, electro, travels in the form of wave, it consists of time varying electric and magnetic field which are perpendicular to each other. But again, Maxwell unable to explain the photoelectric effect and Compton effect. Later on, Einstein came, he explained only the particle nature of the light. De Broglie explained the dual nature of the light. But we cannot obtain a single theory that theory explains all properties of the light. I mean, a single theory does not available, it explains the wave nature of the light and explains the particle nature of the light. So,
so that different theory propose the different properties of the light but now we will go concern to Huygens wave theory of the light what Huygens says so Huygens says that light is a periodic disturbance travels in the form of wave using Huygens theory he explained reflection refraction explain diffraction of the light explain interference of the light all property almost all property of the light that can explain by Huygens theory only one factor light is a longitudinal wave but actually light is a transverse wave only this is only one limitation exists in Huygens wave theory now let us go let us move for Huygens wave theory I mean we will explain Huygens principle what is Huygens principle concerned to nature of the light that we will see see here next concept we will go directly Huygens principle Huygens principle see here Next, we will go Huygens principle and what are Huygens principle, what are the points of Huygens principle that we will see. So, yeah. Now, shall I go? Initially, we will explain Huygens principle and using Huygens principle, we explain reflection and refraction of the light. That we will see. Look at me. Next concept is Huygens principle. Huygens principle. To explain the concept of Huygens principle, we should know about one physical quantity or one term that is wavefront. To explain Huygens principle, the term wavefront is very very important to explain the further explanation of Huygens principle. Though the before explanation of Huygens, we will see what is mean by wavefront. The concept of wavefront that we will see. In shall I can define wavefront then how wavefront can exist that we will see. Wavefront is a locus where all the particles of the medium vibrate in same phase. Shall I define here? Wavefront it is a locus, it is a locus where, where all the particles, all the particles, all the particles of the medium, all the particles of the medium, all the particles of the medium vibrate, all the particles of the medium vibrate in same phase in same phase what is meaning of this that we will see what i said the locus where all the particles of the medium vibrate in same phase that we are calling wavefront very simple now to explain the concept of wavefront now we will see point source of light from point source of light can spread out in all direction how it is look at it. simply i can take this in thing but point source of the light from point source of the light, either light can spread in all direction. See here. Light can spread in all possible directions. Either light can go in this direction or light can go in this direction. Similarly, the light can go in this direction. How it is? Very simple. This is nothing but point source of the light. From point source of the light, light wave can spread in all direction. They can spread in all direction. See here. It can spread in all direction. If the light is going in this direction, how the wave can see it? If light can go in this direction, how the wave can wave can move like this? Like this wave can move? Like this wave can move? Right or or how the light can move? It can move like this. Simply it can move like this. In this way light can move. 
in this way light can move like this are you following then what i said wave front is a locus where all the particles of the medium vibrate in same phase what are here see here if i choose this is one particle this particle and this particle are in same phase similarly this particle this particle are in same phase and this particle this particle are in same phase similarly this one and this were in same phase all particles are in same phase if we join all these points this becomes wave front this becomes wave front or if we choose all these points look at this point i can choose this one i can choose this one i can choose similar this one this one this one like this you can choose if we join all these points this becomes what wave front are you following see here then if i choose all these points this becomes what this becomes wave front what is wave front wave front it is a locus it is a locus where all the particles of the medium vibrate in same phase or simply it is a locus where all the particles of the medium vibrate in same phase i can draw the separate diagram for it how it is let us take it is a point source of light from point source of light light can go like this see here light can spread like this in all possible directions right around this see here wave front it is a locus if i choose this point this point this point and this point all particles are in same phase wave front it is a locus where all the particles of the medium vibrate in same phase similar so again so this is one point this is one point one point and this is one point wave front is a locus where all the particles of the medium vibrate in same phase very simple it is a locus wave front is a locus where all the particles of the medium vibrate in same phase that you are calling wave front look at me this is what point source of the light then if the source of light is linear then how it is look at me if i take this is nothing but linear source of the light say from this light can spread in all possible direction look at me it is what value this is linear source of light from this linear source of light how the light can spread either light can go in this direction light can go in this direction in this direction or in this direction right or wrong then if i join this if i join this like this similar look at here light can spread in this direction in this direction in this direction or in this direction like this then if i join this right or wrong this then if we join this one this indicates what wave front how it is looks like this it looks like what cylindrical wave front for a point source of light the wave front looks like a spherical wave front looks like a spherical and for linear source of the light how the wave front looks like this wave front looks like a cylindrical wave front then if the source of light is point source and source of light is linear for point source of light spherical wave front comes and for linear source of the light cylindrical wave front this comes but at a larger distance the spherical wave front and cylindrical wave front they becomes a ray actually how the light can travel from this light can travel like this at a larger distance at the larger distance at the larger distance how this wave front becomes or at a larger distance look at me it is a for infinite distance this infinite distance the spherical wave front that looks like a plane wave front because if you spread out a small stone inside water initially the ripples are looks like circle after long distance how they becomes they becomes a plane like this either the source of light is spherical or the source of light is linear at a infinite distance all the wave front becomes plane how it is look at me at a infinite distance if we draw this if we draw this this becomes what plane wave front or at the infinite distance at the infinite distance infinite look at me if we take this one this this indicates what plane wave front or if we join here this becomes what value plane wave front like this so that the wave front can classify into three category one we are calling spherical wave front cylindrical wave front and plane wave front what i can do this this second call spherical wave front this second call spherical wave front 
spherical wave front i mean the wave front produced due to point source of light that you are calling spherical wave front i the wave front produced due to linear source of light that you are calling cylindrical wave front cylindrical wave front cylindrical wave front i the wave front due to infinite distance that we are calling plane wave front this second call plane wave front plane wave front plane wave front so that the wave front may be classified into three category one we are calling what spherical wave front cylindrical wave front and plane wave front then to explain huygens principle we need the concept of wave front that we will see look at me see here now let us explain huygens principle what is meaning of huygens principle that we will see now i will explain what is mean by huygens principle simply huygens principle explain the nature and propagation of the wave front explain the nature the nature of the wave front and propagation of the wave front is well explained by huygens principle using huygens principle we can well explain reflection refraction of the light diffraction of the light and interference of the light let us see what is meaning of huygens principle Huygens mainly explain three points concerned to propagation of the light. I mean propagation of the wave front. The first point concerned to Huygens theory is Huygens principle is each point on the source of light is a source of new disturbance. Each point on the source of light is a source of new disturbance from which light can spread in all possible direction. How it is? Look at it. Now I can take this nothing but point source of light. See it. Shall I write the points here? First point concerned to Huygens principle. Each point, each point on source of light, on source of light, each point on source of light is a source of new disturbance. is a source of new disturbance source of new disturbance from which from which from which light spread light spread in all possible direction in all possible direction light spread in all possible direction how this is point look at me i can take this is nothing but point source of light say from this point source of light again this is nothing but the light wave light can go in all possible direction look at me what is first point each point on source of light is a source of new disturbance see here if we take this point this point on the source of light each point on source of light is a source of new disturbance from this point again light can spread in all direction are you following ah if we take this is one point again from this point again the light is act as a source of new disturbance from this light can spread in all direction if it take any one point on the light i can take this is one point from this point light can spread in all direction light can spread in all direction you can any one point any one point you take any one point on the source of light from the source of light the light it is act as a source of new disturbance from that point again light spread in all possible direction this is what first point concerned to huygens principle then we will see what about the second point second point concerned to huygens principle you can say that each point on the wave front is a source of new disturbance those are called as secondary wavelengths what it is each point on the wave front is a source of new disturbance those are called as secondary wavelengths how it is look at me 
so let the second point each point each point on wave front each point on wave front is a source of new disturbance is a source of source of new disturbance source of new disturbance those are called as those are called as those are called as secondary wavelets those are called as secondary wavelets what is meaning of this secondary wavelets look at it now already we know concept of wavefront what it is the locus where all medium particles vibrate in the same field that we are calling wavefront look at it. how it is shall i take initially i can take this is nothing but one point source of light from this point source of light how the light can spread out look at me here how the light can spread out see here i can take it also this is nothing but one point source of light from this light can spread like this light can spread like this way are you following if we join the locus what are the locus if i take this is one point this is one point like this if we take the number of points so this we are calling locus of the points if a locus of the points are joining this becomes what wave front right or on this again what are calling this is what wave front this we are calling wave front look at me this we are calling wave front what is second point each point on the wave front is a source of new disturbance those are called as secondary wavelets see here how it is each point on the wave front is a source of new disturbance those are called as secondary wavelets those are called as secondary wavelets see here again each point on the wave front is a source of new disturbance those are called as secondary wavelets simply all each point on the wave front is a source of new disturbance called as secondary wavelets in this one this becomes primary wavelet this becomes secondary wavelet or again each point on the wave front is a source of new disturbance those are called as secondary wavelets each point on the wave front is a source of new disturbance those are called as secondary wavelets in this case this becomes primary and this becomes secondary wavelet simply meaning of second point is each wave front produces another wave front and another wave front produces another wave front simply any one wave front that is a source of another wave front that is nothing but second point each point on the wave front is a source of new disturbance those are called as secondary wave fronts then look at it the forward motion the forward motion of the wave front how it is given that is explained by third point look at it then what about third point of huygens principle that we see third point said that the forward envelope at any instant to secondary wavelet forward envelope to secondary wavelet at any instant give the position of new wave front see here how it is the forward envelope forward envelope forward envelope to secondary wavelet to secondary wavelets secondary wavelets at any instant at any instant at any instant gives gives another wave gives new wave front or gives the forward motion of new wave front forward motion of new wave front look at how it is see here again take this is nothing but point source of light from this let us take this is one wave front this wave front i can call primary wave front what is second point each point on the wave front is a source of new disturbance called a secondary wavelet how it is so if you from this wave front let us take one more wave front produce this what you are calling secondary wave front or oh, 
the second call secondary wave friend i mean secondary wavelet second call oh the second call secondary wavelets secondary wavelets where is what is third point the forward envelope to secondary wavelet at any instant gives the new wavelet forward envelope in what look at me these are this is primary wavefront and this is secondary wavelets see here the forward envelope to secondary wavelets if, if this becomes forward envelope are you following this how it is to secondary wavelet if we draw the tangent line that becomes forward envelope the forward envelope to secondary wavelet give the position of new wavefront i mean if we draw the forward envelope it produces one more wavefront look at me. it produces again one more wave front it produces again one more wave front are you following again this becomes primary now this becomes secondary again forward envelope to secondary wavelets at any instant that gives position of new wave front again if we draw the forward envelope again it gives one more wave front like this it gives or like this it gives one more wave front it gives one more wave front or oh, again if we draw the forward envelope again it gives the one more wave front very simple to secondary wavelet if you draw forward envelope that gives the propagation of new wave front third point concerned only the forward motion of the secondary wavelets how secondary wavelets can propagate in one medium that is given by what value third point very simple what is first point each point on the source of light is the source of new disturbance from which light spread in all direction first point second point is each point on the wave front is the source of new disturbance those are called the secondary wavelets and if we draw the forward envelope to secondary wavelets that gives the forward motion of another wave front this is third point this is huygens principle and concerned to points of huygens principle but using the huygens principle you can explain reflection and refraction of light how will explain reflection and reflection of light that we'll see in the next session thank you